Hi, I'm Kurt Lloyd, and I'm going to give you an introduction to KSC's command and control system. Now, our command and control system is made up of multiple projects, one of which is the Kennedy Ground Control System, or KGCS. Now, KGCS is made up of equipment that's out in the field, out at the pad or at another field location, and that equipment allows the user to control their field equipment while they're out in the field. The command and control system is also made up of LCS, which is the launch control system, which is basically equipment in the firing room that envelops the equipment in KGCS, and it allows the user to sit in the firing room and command the same equipment from the firing room that they were able to control from the field. And the end-to-end -end command and control system also consists of communication subsystems and video subsystems and others. So the command and control system here at KSC is made up of a large team of developers from the engineering directorate. Now the command and control system that we're going to demonstrate for you today has the following capabilities. Right now the command and control system does local control and monitoring from the field and from the control room. It has both simulated and real end items. It performs high level sequence control and it has some automated error handling functionality. It provides events and system messages to the user. It provides measurement health and measurement limits to the user and user prompting. And it also contains some automated regression testing. Now the command and control system that we're going to demonstrate for you today is currently under active development. It's not complete yet. So in the future, we're going to be implementing the following uh, capabilities and more. We'll be adding redundancy management, data recording and retrieval, data plotting, We'll be adding an advisory system, an emergency saving system, and numerous other enhancements that are, that are on the books to be developed in the future. Let's start off by looking at a high-level architecture of the command and control system. This slide shows you, at a very high level, the architecture of the command and control system. On the far right, you can see end items for each of our subsystems. And in this demonstration, we're going to show you Range Safety Checkout System, or RSCS, Crew Access Arm, or CAA, and Sound Suppression, or SS. Now these end items, which would be things like pumps, motors, valves, power supplies, publish their data to an industrial controller, which is located out in the field. An industrial controller is also known as a PLC, or Programmable Logic Controller. And those PLCs publish that data to a network, which is picked up by a ground support equipment gateway, and that GSE gateway publishes the data to a message bus for anything in LCS to pick up. For example, an application running on an application server could pick up that data and do something with it. For example, perform a calculation on it. Or the user interface, the display in the control room, can pick up that data and display it to the user. And you can see in this architecture, there's also another set of user interfaces out in the field. These are the KGCS user interfaces that are out in the field that allow the user to control their end items directly from the field as opposed to in the control room. So the path of measurements go from end items to PLC to the GSC gateway to the message bus to the user interface or to applications running on the application server. Now commands go in the opposite direction. Commands start at the user interface and get published onto the message bus, get picked up by the GSC gateway and get published to whichever uh, PLC, it's appropriate for that command to go to, and then the PLC sends a command directly to the end item. So that's measurements and commands in the command and control system. Now, the command and control system architecture gives us a distribution of control or, a, or an allocation of control where we can put our control software in one of two places. We can put our control software here in the application server, which, is re which resides in the control room or we can put our control software here in the industrial controller out in the field. Or we can, we can split our software and put it in both places. We can put some of it here and some of it there. Now the command and control system that we're going to demo for you today is actually made up of a mix of real hardware end items and simulated end items. And the presenters that are going to come up next and show you their systems are going to tell you which end items are real and which end items are simulated.
Now we're going to learn about the master console operator function of the end-to-end -end command and control system. And Gloria Chestnut Penzak is going to demonstrate that for us today. Hello, my name is Gloria Chestnut and I'm a master console operator or MCO for LCS. An MCO is a specialized operator that manages the set, monitors its health and status, provisions software, installs and removes models for testing and training purposes, and does a variety of control actions, uh, such as initializing set resources for the day or terminating them at the end of the day. One of our main tasks is to provision software, of course. An MCO is able to provision configuration managed software to a set. Once the set has been loaded, we are able to initialize or terminate the appropriate set resources as necessary to support the day's activities. And the day's activities can range anywhere from training new teammates, testing new software designs or hardware designs, troubleshooting anomalies, or launching a rocket, or anything in between. Now, one of our other capabilities is simulation models. We have those available to us as well. Through interface here, I have a choice of models that I could install, load, for the user community for the day's activities. The simulation team here at KSC is able to model anything from ground support equipment to flight systems including programmable logic controllers, if so desired. We have access to those models, and we can load any of those as MCOs at the request of the user community. Well, now we have a loaded set. Everything's activated, ready to support the community for whatever their tasks are today. And we have a model backed up. So we're done, right? wrong. An MCO's job is just getting started at this point. As you see, we have an active set and that needs to be monitored just in case something doesn't quite go as planned today. That means we are watching our commercial off-the-shelf software. This provides us with immediate real-time insight into the health and status of the set itself as well as related resources. That means if I'm monitoring and it breaks, I'm going to know about it as soon as it happens. That also means that your MCO is on station and ready to support any last minute activities that you might need. For example, you need to change a model, or you'd like to load some additional software, or you need to bring up some additional workstations. We have those and we are able to do that. So, an MCO, Master Console Operator, we are here to support you, whatever your needs might be. Now we're going to see a live demonstration of the Rain Safety Checkout System, and Mr. Elkin Narena is going to show that to us. Hello, my name is Elkin Narena, and I represent the Rain Safety Checkout System. Uh, the system is in charge of uh, verifying and testing the flight termination system aboard a flight space vehicle, and is also part of the overall flight safety system. Uh, we currently, what we do is we, we, in accordance with the Eastern Range requirements, we check out and make sure the vehicles are ready to be able to use for flight and the safety of people around it. Um, today our system is actually is different from the rest of the system that's seen here. It's actually real working hardware that's housed over in our other building in our lab. It's all eight components that's in a full structured prototype rack. The hardware consists of the relays, the attenuator, the panel view display system, the decoder and encoder, the signal generator, the frequency counter, and the multimeter. All these systems come together to allow us to check out the system on the, on the flight vehicle and allow us to make sure it's ready for flight. All code is currently stored on our PLC over in that rack and allows us to run it locally from there over to the LCS system here. All the equipment is hardwired Ethernet-wise and is serialized through our, what's called the eWeb card and allows us to control it for each individual command through the LCS. And now I'll go ahead and I'll show overall display. 
And this is our overall range safety checkout system display that allows us to have main portions of the hardware that we control to allow us to do our job. Each piece of the hardware has sequences that allow us to, do, um, to control and initialize the preconfigured values. And what I'll show right here is I'll show right now, we can actually go ahead and turn on our relays locally to our rack. And now you can see that the upper stage relays and the first stage relays have been turned on to allow us to control the hardware connected to a vehicle if we had one in play. And overall, over here on our command system, we have our encoder and decoder that allows us to send tones and it simulate arm and fire and destruct commands to uh, the vehicle so therefore we can test and make sure that the proper commands are going through. And I'll go ahead and send some arm commands. And as you can see, the way the system is set up is where it allows us to send a group of commands that allow us to know their pulses that are going through. We have a latch capability that shows us we did receive at least one command and then the counter that shows that four commands did go through properly on each at, on side of the decoder and the encoder. Now I'll go ahead and send a continuous abort command to let you see how the pulsing works real time. And as you can see, it slowly counts up, but it is sending a series of commands from the encoder and the decoder seen it on the other side as well. Over in the rack, the same type of uh, setup is being shown with our overview display, so it's showing the pulsing and it's real time locally is on, the, on the panel view display. I'll go ahead and stop it. Now we'll go over to the overall display again and show a group of, of commands that we like to call fusion CUIs, which allows us to send a series of commands and then have a series of measurements come back that shows right here on our inhibits where we are having not only voltage measurements, analog and discrete measurements grouped together to uh, show a single measurement and send a group of commands at once. And then as far as what I was explaining about the coding for the rack, the rack itself has all of our, our code stored locally on it where we send sequences to preconfigured values to each piece of hardware. That allows us to initialize these pieces of hardware on low level sequencing on this display and come over and actually build up to a larger sequence to initiate the full system on the LCS's side. And now I'll demonstrate that as when we do that with the signal generator. As you can see, three of the commands are zero and then they preset to preconfigured values and it turns on all the proper commands to have it set up for use for testing. And that's an overall basis of the range safety checkout system, which allows us to control this rack that is fully deployable and fully usable across any flight vehicle uh, connected to the command and control system here. Thank you.